Hello, my dear friends. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. Really glad to see you today. I have decided to start doing a month in review video um, because there were a few candles this month that I started to burn, tried to burn, and were so disastrous that I just stopped. And for a whole host of reasons, I kind of didn't want to do dedicated reviews of those candles, but I thought this would be a good opportunity to say, hey, I tried to burn this. I couldn't. Um, here's what it was. <laughs> and then pass on quickly, as well as just kind of review some of the things that I burned, remind myself of them, maybe remind you too. Most of these I've done dedicated reviews of throughout the month, um, but it kind of does my heart good to remind myself of all the things I enjoyed. So let's start out. We've got Homeworks. The two Homeworks candles that I burned and finished during the month of January was first of all, Frosted White Pine. Looks like that. All the way down to the wick clips. And yeah, this one was really nice. I would repurchase this one. White Pine, Fresh Spruce, Sparkling Bergamot, and White Patchouli. Um, it's a really nice January tree. I liked it. Yeah, and it actually performed decently for a Homeworks candle. And by decently, I mean in the 6.5 and 7 range for most all of the candle. I'm happy with it. That is in a hurricane, caveat there. And then I also burned all the way down the North Pole, which looks like this. Again, all the way down to the wick clips. And I loved this one for the fragrance, not for the performance. So I would love for this to come back um, in another iteration. This was one of those 2022 pours. Not good. I see Arctic Air, Pine Needles, Green Holly, and Winter Fruits. It's got a beautiful mint note in it, but that doesn't overwhelm the fact that it's a beautiful like floral fruity candle at the same time. And somehow it feels right for winter and for cold weather without it being a complete blast of cold air a la winter, which is coming right up. Um, so yeah, I would buy this one again and I really recommend it for the fragrance. I think a lot of you would love it, but not with the performance that I was getting which was, I can't remember, it was, it was very low. I think probably in the four range, five range, something like that. Not good, not good. All right, um, this one with the discoloration, um, Perfect Winter by Bath and Body Works, which I loved. And I would love to keep burning this one. Should I keep it out? And just like in February, like if I need it, no, it's okay. Ah, so great. Gosh, I wish I had bought a backup of this one. I stopped burning it because I was like, I need to remember this candle and I need to have it for emergency reasons back in storage. So we did not burn it all the way. Winter Pine Needles, Frosted Eucalyptus, Icy Peppermint. And if you recall from my review, I, if I did the notes, I would say it is Eucalyptus Pine and candy cane white chocolate. <laughs> I loved this one. So successful. Um, all right, the lone Kringle that we have is Christmas coal, which I burned um, all the way down, all the way down. It really burned quite well. Do not be misled by this because this was my fault from holding it in a bizarre way when I was trying to light the wicks at one point. Really lovely fragrance and one that I'm kind of obsessed about. Ooh, it's a little bit masculine. It's a little bit leather library, but it's also got this beautiful floral rose color, which is stunning. It's a sexy candle and it's just, it's warm, but sultry and like intriguing and edgy. It's all of those things. And as with that Homeworks candle, Oh, the performance was so not good. In fact, the performance was worse on this one than that North Pole Homeworks candle. So I just can't recommend it in terms of the performance, but I didn't try burning it. I mean, melting it. So if you've got a warmer, you've got a melter, you can usually get a little bit more volume out of those particular formats, 
Um, so if you if you're not opposed to not burning traditionally, you might be able to get a little bit more out of it. Um, and I think it's lovely for February, um, especially with that rose note. So gosh, if you see it at a really good price on the Kringle website, um, that one might be one to try out, provided that you adjust your expectations on the performance and that you might be willing to melt as opposed to burn. Um, along those lines, I tried this candle out. I have several little boutique candles here by this company, Sweetwater Decor. Um, and they've shown up at a lot of different places. I can't remember if I bought this off their website or I bought it off of Macy's. Um, the fragrance is really nice. It is, I mean, it's not, it doesn't like break the mold or anything. Bayberry, clove, nutmeg, and cedar. Very nice, very clove forward. Very clove forward. I would say it's a clove candle with other things. <laughs> Being the nutmeg, cedar, and bayberry. It's beautiful. And if it had per performance, if it had good strength and throw, we would be having a different story. I tried burning it. When that didn't work, when it was tunneling and I was getting nothing out of it, I tried warming it. So I put it under my warmer, got a pretty good wax pool, and was still getting absolutely nothing. And you know what? I am starting to adopt a different, men I have too many candles in my storage, um, especially with these one wicks. The warmer is kind of the last resort. If you don't perform under the warmer, I'm not gonna bother any longer. Like life is too short. It just is. Life is too short and there are too many candles. So I'm sorry to sweet water, but it was a no for me. It was a no. Marion Bright. Um, it just it just had no no fragrance, no fragrance. Sad but true. What can I say? On that level too, here is one that I bought at Marshalls. <laughs> I think this was actually last Christmas. I like it. It reminds me very much of the way that my grandmother's house smelled in the 1980s, and it's sophisticated. And also kind of like tobacco-y and like, oh gosh, I love it. It was a Christmas candle, like a generic one from Marshall's. Also, isn't that stunning? I just thought it was a stunning vessel. It was $10 and I shouldn't have bought it because I knew it wasn't going to perform. But like, it was just one of those really nostalgic kind of smells that like took me to a space. And the vessel was beautiful guess what? It didn't perform. <laughs> it just didn't. And I burned it several times over the last year. It's been sitting on my piano. And finally I was like, I don't know, it was in a January, like cleaning, clearing, organizing candles, being a little bit more ruthless. Will you burn this? Will you continue to burn this? Is it just sitting around? Do you need to just cut your losses and move forward? And this was one of those candles. So unfortunately, goodbye, my friend. Goodbye, my grandmother's house. It will be gone. Also along those lines, this one. So I bought this at Target, probably, and it's very small, five ounces. At least a year ago, maybe two years ago. Um, it's like this little paper wraparound, which is kind of cute. And um, it's Bohemian Lotus. And actually it's a very similar smell to this one. So again, we're kind of, <laughs> it's my grandmother's house again. I can't explain it to you. I don't even know, I don't know what the notes of either of them are, so I can't even tell you. It's kind of like fresh and soapy, but at the same time like spicy incense and cologne. <laughs> But it's all like done in this very soft kind of like exotic 1980s way. Like what they would have thought was exotic and masculine leaning in the 80s. <laughs> it's just not really descriptive. And I wish I had the notes on this. Anyway, I loved it so much. And these candles are so cheap at Target. I've said this before, but I just think Target's candles are the most... 
they're terrible. Well, I mean, for the most part, they're absolutely terrible in terms of the way that they perform. And it's such a missed opportunity because I think that company has good fashion sense. They have, I've never seen like a grocery store, a candle store with so many candles. I mean, they've just got aisles and aisles of candles and they're all terrible. They also like, they also sell like Chesapeake Bay, which is owned by Yankee, um, which you might be able to get an okay and decent candle there. But I would say that my impression is that Chesapeake Bay is a little bit better than Village, you know, or a little bit better than Tuscany, but still nothing to really write home about. Um, but yeah, so much potential for the Target candles, so little execution performance. Yeah, so this one was terrible. Once again, I tried burning it, nothing. <laughs> then I tried warming it, again, nothing. <laughs> And I just called it. Also, it got so very, very hot when it was under the lamp that I almost worried about it a little bit from a safety perspective, especially with that like paper wrap around. Okay, nostalgic grandmother's house again going away. Um, if you recall, we also did two little Lafco candles, which were limited edition holiday candles for Lafco, not this Christmas, but the Christmas before, and that was hazelnut torone and woodland spruce and woodland spruce they came in these little like you know christmas tree ornaments um and this is such a sexy christmas tree oh gosh you know every time i'm like is it really as good as i remember and then i put my nose in it and i'm like yes so great it really is a beautiful sexy christmas tree fragrance wow I'm not usually that, I, I hate it when people are like, I would love if my boyfriend smelled like this. Like, you know, like a man doesn't always have to be like compared to a candle. Anyway, I do think this one does lean a little bit like masculine personal fragrance. That's beautiful. That's stunning. Frankly, I know a lot of men who would love that candle. It performed okay for a 1.9 ounce votive that was $18.50. I'm just not sure if I really want to spring for Lafco at the prices that they have right now. But if I was going to do so, I would feel fairly confident trying Woodland Spruce in a larger vessel. Hazelnut Taroni, as lovely as the scent was, just would not be one that I would try. It was so much more weak. It was weak even for a 1.9 ounce candle. <laughs> and it doesn't really smell like hazelnut. Um, yes, it does have like um, a creamy, like nougat kind of smell to it. Um, caramel overtones. But I think also a little bit of either amber or sandalwood that kind of makes it not a true gourmand which I like it, I like it because I don't mind, I'm not a gourmand person and I definitely don't mind if the gourmand isn't pure, you know? But I was hoping for more nut that I wasn't getting and I definitely want a candle with a lot more volume so I wouldn't personally bother with that one. Um, and I think that if you like those kinds of candles, you can probably find a better one in a better price point, yeah. Two other major disappointments that I did not talk about. <laughs> oh my gosh. I bought these both. No, I didn't. So we've got two village candles here. One is grapefruit um, turmeric tonic. Um, and this one I bought at Marshall's for $10. Maybe it was a bad sign because the Village Candles for the last few years at TJ Maxx and Marshalls have been like $12.99. That's been the price point. And so I rejoiced to see over the last couple months that they're now offering Village Candles back at their usual price point several years ago, which was $9.99. But I'm wondering if the price reduction is because like these candles are much worse <laughs> than they've traditionally been. On cold, I like it. Um, it's a beautiful grapefruit smell. 
there's a freshness to it, a vitality. It's got some zestiness in it, but it's got an authenticity in the zestiness rather than like an artificial synthetic carbonated beverage kind of um, um, uh, effervescence, which is amazing given the fact that they're even calling it a tonic. So they're even leaning into like the carbonated beverage kind of genre. Surprisingly fresh. And it has a little bit of depth. This says it has sandalwood and amber in it too. I don't know that it significantly makes it less of a gourmand. It just kind of rounds it out and makes it a very beautiful fragrance, a very beautiful grapefruit. I love it on cold, but burning it was a disaster. And I didn't burn it as much as this one. This was the one that I burned first, beginning of the month, because it's a lovely fragrance for January. And I burned it so many times. So here, this is, this is sugar plum. This is like old paraffin too, which like will just stay with you forever. Like you can burn it for 30 years, you know? <laughs> so while it looks like I haven't really burned it a whole lot, that was probably like eight or nine burns, right? So this is sugar plum, which I believe they've also repackaged as fairy dust. I think fairy dust, which is also like purple, but it's got like a holographic fairy on the front for like six year olds. Um, I don't love that branding and I don't love that, that label. Um, but I believe it's, either, it's either the same fragrance or it's extremely similar fragrance. Sugar Plum, I think obviously they were marketing it for more like holiday season. And so I think they clearanced it off. They may have even discontinued it and they're just going to keep like fairy dust. So the notes on this are plum, raspberry, amber, and cedar wood. And it's an intoxicating fragrance. It's one that I love. First of all, I love those dark, deep fruits, you know, raspberry, plum, fig, all about it, especially for like fall and winter. But honestly, I, I would do them anytime. I just think it's amazing. One of my favorite candles by Veluspa is um, Santiago Huckleberry, which is kind of a sleeper for them. But oh my gosh, it's so good because it's those dark jammy fruits and then mixed with like wood, some musk, some like really dark, like sexy elements. You know what I mean? Oh, so great. I love it. And this one is very much like that. Got a lot of musk in it. And I think it's the, maybe the amber and the cedar wood together that are kind of creating that really deep kind of musky feel along with the very jammy plum and raspberry, but it's all very low range. It's gorgeous. The problem with it is that not only was the strength and throw not great. I mean, I want to say that it was kind of in the four to five range, which is not good. Um, but this was the, this was the killer. It smelled very strongly of wax, of paraffin and of kerosene upon it being burned, especially f at length for over an hour. It was giving me a headache, how terrible the kerosene smell was. And I don't know if it is the paraffin that I'm smelling or the wicks are not the right size for this particular wax formula. They're burning too hot. They're burning too high. Um, I'm not entirely sure all the reasons for it, but it just smells very cheap when it's burned. So both of them are very strong and beautiful on cold, but then when burned, they just go in a terrible direction and you can hardly smell the fragrance through like the kerosene and, oh, it's just disgusting. It's really disgusting. And the throw it, the strength is not good and the strength you're getting is horrible. And after like the seventh or eighth burn on it, I was just dreading and I kept being like, I'll burn through it, I'll burn through it. And then I was like, I, again, I'm just switching my mentality here. Yes, you spent $10 on this, but I think you need to just cut your losses. Life is just too short. Like this candle is not gonna improve. It's not, it's, it's, 
it's a it, it's a bad wax formula. It's a bad wick combination. It's it's just a lot of really cheap candle making here and the chances of it improving as I go along are so slim. And that's like the call that I made in like the Target candle and the other Marshalls candle. And like usually I'm that girl that's like if you buy it, you should burn it all the way down. And now that I have a channel, I feel the pressure of that even more where it's like I'm not gonna give you a review after this or even after the halfway point. I wanna tell you how it burned all the way through so that there are no surprises. I wanna be able to tell you I was able to burn this down to the wick clips or I was not able to or the scent started to like dramatically go away in the second half of the candle. If you review it before that point, like there's a lot of details like that that I would wanna know as a consumer or as a potential consumer, right? but I can't do it on these two. And if they get better, like, unfortunately, that's not something that I'm going to experience. I'm going to give them terrible reviews. And from my impression of these two is that Village Candle, and I, I don't know, now this one I bought off the website. That's the thing, and that's the really discouraging thing. This one I bought off of Marshalls, you know? So we've got two candles coming. One was directly from the company. These, to me, they both felt to me as if they were extremely cheap candles. Like, they had just completely phoned it in and like the entire product maybe cost them like pennies and they're selling it on a huge like profit margin. Even at $10, it's well over what it's worth. Frankly, my Aldi's candles perform better, more reliably, and less cheap than these two do. Gosh, that hurts my heart because I'm really rooting for Village Candle, but this is not okay. Village, don't fuck it up. You are fucking it up. I've said this before. Village may end up being one of the last candle companies that has this old school Yankee Candle tumbler apothecary style tumbler with 100% paraffin. And there are still people out there like myself that like the paraffin. What? Sue me, you know? <laughs> Come at me, fine. <laughs> but, but no, but this is a no. What is this? You can't just pour paraffin in a jar and call it a day. These are terrible excuses for candles. So yeah, like nobody's gonna buy them. And it has nothing to do with like paraffin going out of style. It has to do with just them giving us horrible, shitty candles. I can't recommend these two on any price point. Go to Aldi, please. All right, um, then the, my two lone Bath & Body Works candles, <laughs> which actually I just reviewed, so there's no point in belaboring the point, but lavender and vanilla which is so great. One of you left a comment on my Bath & Body Works video and said, and I think you're right. Um, you said, I, I just recently bought it because they it is available, lavender and vanilla is available currently, but it's only in a one wick. But they did pour it recently as one of their like signature one wicks in the stores online, yeah? And she bought one of those and she said, I've never experienced before. And it was so beautiful. And she said, I, it's not the same lavender and vanilla as the aromatherapy one, which is actually not very good. And I said, you are totally right. You're totally right. The, you know, their big aromatherapy line. I think they have had a lavender and vanilla in and out of that collection for years. And I've smelled it before and I don't think it's very good at all. Not to be confused with this one. This lavender and vanilla is not that aromatherapy um, fragrance. It's a completely different one. And as I said in the review, I think it's the same lavender that's in lavender marshmallow and pink lavender and espresso. It is a lovely lavender. That lavender note is perfect. It's just enough herbal and austere. It's just enough like floral and I don't know beautiful. It's a beautiful lavender. You know what I mean? 
It's gorgeous. I, I really recommend this candle. And I'm not a vanilla candle person. You guys know that. I'm not even a huge lavender person. This is beautiful. It's a classic. And it needs to be around, like, just on the regular, I think. Also, Cozy Cashmere, which I didn't like quite as well. Um, this is... But it's still nice. It's really nice. Um, so it's a very bright, fresh, clean, soft kind of soapy floral. So kind of a little bit laundry detergent in that it also has kind of like a cotton linen note in it. Um, but it's really beautifully balanced between the linen, between the floral, between that like soapy element. Um, and it's really stunning. This is a great candle for now into early spring. So it's a nice transitional candle. You've got a little bit of that floral. You've got that crisp, clean, fresh note, which is great for like new year, but also like the very first time that you open up your windows, right? And the, the feeling of like the spring clothesline or those like linen, crisp linen curtains blowing in the windows, very similar. Um, and a really good vibe for that. Um, and then last but not least, hmm, I took this out of my warmer. Look at him, yeah? Oh man, this was, so this was um, Christmas, Christmas morning from Glass House. So if you remember, I should have brought it, but the red Glass House um, Christmas morning candle, which didn't burn particularly well, but it melted under the warmer like a dream. And there was a certain point where I was like, because I'm not so practiced with like warming things, I was like, maybe maybe the fragrance is like um, getting weaker. So I'll go ahead and like pour off like a little bit of it. So I poured it off into like this little foil thing. And then I was, I, I was gonna dispose of it. It was like sitting on my counter and I kept smelling it. And I'm like, I wonder if there's enough fragrance in there to keep melting it. So I just put that in um, my bottom candle warmer that I have in the bathroom, which is then it became this. And sure enough, it had amazing fragrance. And I melted it almost every night for like three weeks. It lasted like that entire time. And they say, Glasshouse says that their fragrances are like triple fragranced. I believe it. This fragrance is intoxicating and is gorgeous. And I have to have it every single Christmas. It is so beautiful. It's got all the elements. It's got the spice, it's got the tree, it's got the orange, it's got the cloves. It's got all the things that Christmas is. And it's Christmas, it's Christmas in a candle. It really is. I love it. I love it. In fact, I'm, I'm tempted to, I think I'm going to email the company, which they probably, I mean, they're probably like, who cares? They're not going to do anything. But like, I'm going to email the company and I'm going to say, please consider doing wax melts. <laughs> they don't know how to do candles properly. Like they don't know anything about the wicks. Like they all tunnel. They're just like, Bleh. but I, it seems like and some of the, and many of their fragrances are gross too. That's a different issue. <laughs> but but the fragrances that work and that are fantastic, I think they're right about the triple fragrance. This was amazing. I will buy from them wax melts. If they make wax melts, I will buy them 100%. Ugh, I don't even want to throw this one away. Because I can still smell it. Anyway. All right, my friends, that was January in review. It wasn't bad. I'm missing some like more rugged scents. So right now I am burning a um, vanilla birch homeworks candle, really stunning. I have the Yankee candles that are coming up too. Um, oh, Snow Day. Snow Day I burned all the way down too from homeworks, but I'll put that in my February thing because I need to do a dedicated review on Snow Day. I think we need some woody candles here for February. So we're gonna, we're gonna make those adjustments. I also have the vanilla bean from Harry Bendel, which is very similar to vanilla birch from Bath and Body Works. So I might do those too. We'll see. All right, my friends, thanks for joining me this month. Thanks for joining me for these candles. Let me know if you've got some thoughts 
about any of that. Um, I suppose I'll try to at least list, if not link things down below, if they're available. Um, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.